Hi, and welcome to Filters, Filters, and More Filters. Hey, I'm Eric, and um, I get a lot of questions around the concept of filters, especially from people who are getting into Business Central uh, for the first time, Business Central, not, not, not users, because filters is very intuitive for users. You apply a filter, and then you see filtered data. But from people who are used to SQL, SQL programming, SQL uh, where clauses, um, the, the concept of filters are different. Um, and I thought I'll do a, a little video on, on, on filters. Uh, what's important to understand is the history of filters. The hi filters have been part of Navision Navigator since the very first version. You can see the video on on, on, on that version. If you, you know, subscribe, find uh, find the video on, on the grandfather of, of Business Central. You can see that there are filters in there just like we have today. Um, and and the reason for the concept at that time was that it was not SQL. It was just a we call it the native database. It was a home. Uh, made uh, database. It was very, very powerful, uh, awesome technology, um, but it worked differently. And so, so filters was got baked into the language and have stayed there, even though our data is now in SQL and we could, and we try to get closer to the concept of a where clause and, and, uh, and the concept of thinking we do a select statement and, and stuff like that. But uh, that's, that's not the language as it is right now. Um, so so let's let's play around with this a bit. Um, here is the item table because I usually always use something other than the item table. So here is the item table. Uh, I can hit the filter thingy, the funnel, and I can apply a filter. And let's do do let's say unit price. Uh, and I think we have some unit prices somewhere out here. We have right there. So I could say, let's get unit prices from 600 to 660. And I found one item. So dot dot is the same as SQL between. So if you want to apply a filter like that, you can use dot dot in code. Um, actually, let me show you how that will look in code because that can be done in two different ways. Here is, I was just about to add first pros, processing. Let me make this as so big that you actually can see what I'm doing. Processing, uh, caption, set filter, application area, uh, wow, well, let's set filter. That was, that was a nice one. Uh, application area all promoted through. Wow. Promote category, process, promoted is big, true, promote only. There we go. Um, trigger on action. And now we can do. Um, promoted only is true. So, so let's say that we would do reg dot set filter. <laughs> there we go. Uh, unit price. And I did, what did I do? 600 to 600 so i can i can do this like just like i typed it uh, and and this is this is a total valid way of doing it it works flawless um but we can get the exact same filter and 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 i think this is very important to to mention because there's a lot of urban legends around what I'm just going to say now. So I can do the same. And now instead of I'm doing set filter, I'm doing set range. And I'm doing this. So set range and then two parameters. From and to. 
So these two lines are setting the exact same filter. There's no performance difference because in the end they are both translated into a SQL statement of some sort. Um, there might have been, again, urban legend, there might have been 30 years ago in an ancient version, a performance difference whether you use set filter or set range, but today it doesn't matter. Set range has the, um, the advantage of being uh, uh, type persistent, uh, meaning that if I do unit, let's let's try this. Uh, so I do test to test. Well, that cannot be. You cannot put a text from and to on on, on a decimal field, uh, where I could do test so some date up here and uh, and this is the code for compiler we can compile this and deploy it and see what happens um let's see process come on process set filter and we got a wrong time error because that is not a valid filter. Uh, so, so even though you can get anything to compile because set filter is just a string, uh, it still needs to be translated into whatever it is. So, in general, I if if what I need to set a filter on uh, can be done with a set range. I will always use a set range simply because set range will make sure that the type of whatever I'm doing is correct. So there's a higher chance that this filter will work simply because the compiler is helping me make a valid filter. Um, so that was that was that was dot dot and SQL uh, equivalent between. Um, we could also do, let's do something else. So now we can set a filter on, on, on the item number, and then we can use the, the pipe. Uh, let's me do another one here. So now I use the pipe and the pipe means or. So in this case, we have added a or filter saying that either 1896-S or 1908-S. Uh, if I use the an and sign, that would mean and. And and sometimes people get confused saying I want that and that. So you do a filter like this, say and, and there's nothing there. But that filter is in reality saying that the value of the of a single field should be both values, which doesn't make any sense. Uh, but from when you when you kind of speak it out, that item number should be uh, A and B and C. That's not how you have to tell the computer. It, it, it's actually from a logic perspective what you're saying is wrong. The item number should be A or B or C. Uh, so that that's what you need to put in. So as soon as we change this to the, to the pipe we're back to something that works. Um, we, could, we could do a, let's grab our our unit price again, because the end, so so next question you would ask me, but Eric, then why isn't there even an and function? So let's do, we could do something and say that, let's give us our unit price under a hundred and we get two items. And let's check the unit prices, 82 and a half and 89. That's pretty good. Uh, we could also do unit prices larger than 80. That's, well, everybody, everything, I guess, right now. Um, but we could also say larger than 80 and less than 100. So now we have in 
reality create, created the exact same, or not, not quite actually, but almost the exact same as 80 dot dot 100, apparently because 80 and 100 are not in this range in this case. So in some cases, if you don't want the uh, delimiters as part of the, the filter, this is what you have to do. So suddenly the end uh, actually makes sense. If we want it to be the exact same as the, the dot dot, we would add equal signs here. In this case, it's still the same because I, I don't have any items that I could say large enough if I did 89 here. So in, in case I remove this equal, then 89 will go away. Um, so that's dot dot, larger than, smaller than, and an or. And, and and you'll find that the the or the pipe is used in a bunch of places. Sometimes when when you're working with, uh, with dimension sets and you need to find all the dimension sets that includes a specific dimension value, you can end up in getting a, a long long string with or because of all the dimension sets that have that value included. Um, then we can have an let's let's remove this one. Uh, and do another one. So let's do a filter on the description. So I would do chair. I get nothing. Ah, but let's. So what we can do is that we can add a the add sign. So the add sign mean is meaning case insensitive. Still nothing. Because I'm, I'm I'm looking for a item with the entire des description should be chair. We don't care about the case. Um, so maybe what I can do is that I can add a an asterisk before that. Uh, let's see. I can't remember. Let's put it here. There's nothing. Let's put one afterwards. See what we get at some point. Ah, because chair was neither first or last. So in this case, we want chair to be somewhere in um, in the description. So we need an asterisk on both sides. So if we had something, let's say we wanted to find something that ends with blue. So asterisk blue, and then we get something that only those two items that uh, that ends with blue. We could also do um, W, uppercase, star. Oh, I can't remember what items we have. Let's find. So L O N stars. Then we have everything that starts with London, uh, or with L O N at least. Um, so so you can you can use the star, and you can use uh, the asterisk to improve your text searches. Um, and of course, as soon as you use all these characters, you cannot use those in a set range. You have to use them in a set filter. Okay, let me let me do another one here because here's another interesting one. Filter inventory uh, larger than nine. So, Give me all the items where we have more than nine in inventory. That's that's pretty neat. Uh, what's interesting here is that inventory is not a field. So now we're applying a filter on something that's not a field. Um, because inventory is actually a flow field. So if we click on it, we get the item ledger entries that makes up the, uh, the quantity of 10. Um, but we can still apply a filter on this one. But this filter does not go to SQL uh, directly, like a, a classic where clause, because now it gets complicated. So the system will need to calculate this and and then apply the filter. So that happens in the uh, in the service tier, and that also means that you should not put filters on flow fields. Uh, unless you know that you're within us in a very small data set. So if you have a hundred thousand items and apply a filter like this, the server is going to melt. 
Um, so 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 be aware you can, but use with with uh, with care. Um, then the next question uh, you might ask is that. Um, but what if something is not a filter? What if something is is a a selection? So meaning that uh, I can go and, and do the select more and say, what is that? Is that a filter, Eric? And uh, uh, no, not yet. But but let me. So this is this is a selection in in the old version we have a way with control f1 to mark a record uh, but but that was kind of weird uh, that worked very well in the old version then the windows version came and we had both the multi-line selection and the mark uh, now we had this so so what is this let me show you let's create another oh you know what let's just do get selection so what we need to do now is we need to create another variable and i'll just call this item two um, and then on the current page there is a function call and this is this is not it's not very intuitive but but it, it makes sense but it's just not intuitive there is a function called set selection filter and you use that to get the selection filter uh, but you also use it to set it on another variable so we have rec uh, which is 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 running the page but if we do this set selection filter on this new record that has never had anything to do with anything and let's create a message here and do filters equal percentage one count equal percentage two and then we'll do item two dot get filters get filters will return a string get filter will return the string of the filter of a single field get filters will turn will, will return a string of everything that's on this record. And then for good measure, let's count how many records are in item two. Um, let's just try this. There's a couple of things I wanna point out with this. Um, close some windows. So if we go and select one two three four and we take our function get selection filter we get count equal four so clearly item two now has a filter applied where there's only four records available uh, but the filter says marked yes so this is actually the old marking function that's still in code. So you can mark a record. There's a, a function called record.mark. And then there is a function called um, marked only. So if I do item three here, record item again, just ignore all this code because now I'm just typing random code here. And I let's do item three, find first, and then we do item three, mark, true, we mark this one. And then we could do item three next, just to move to the next one. And item three, mark this one again, true. Now we can activate this special filter by doing item three that marked only. Um, meaning that we'll get two records in, in, in this little made up case here. So set selection filter will actually get the selection and apply it to a different record. Uh, meaning that if, if you need to like mark some record and then run a report, well, you would mark the record and then grab this one. So now you have a, a, 
a record with those filters applied and you could pass that into a report. Um, so that's pretty neat. Um, okay, so the next question that I sometimes get is how do I set two filters on the same field? Um, and let's let's change this function to set two filters. Uh, we'll just get rid of these because now we're just going to work on on reg again. So I can do reg dot set range. Uh, let's do unit price from. Uh, let's do 80 till 300. Um, and let's run this bad boy. This is really complicated code. Let's see if uh, it works as I intended. So now we have our items we set and we got less records here. Let's we could even make this. That's okay. We we got something here, and we got the the ones with with eighty two and eighty nine. So what if we, for some reason, want to set two filters at the same time? So if I did reg dot set range unit price, and then I'll do a hundred to uh, three hundred. I'll do hundred to four hundred here. So as if if I just ran this code, this will just the the second filter would override the first one. But we do have something called a filter group. So let me do do this. So so since I'm working on on on, on rec, I'm, I'm just going to preserve something. Uh, so we can do grouply equal rec dot filter oh guilter <laughs> filter group. So rec dot filter group, especially if I do an equal here, that will help a lot. What filter group is? Uh, let me actually find this because then we may. If I do business central filter group, I think I have it somewhere here. So the idea is that you can have multiple filters uh, applied at the same time. You, in some cases, you will notice that some filters are visible and some filters are not visible. Meaning you you open a page and filters are applied but you cannot see them as filters. That be that's because they're sitting in a different filter group. And you can see the system has a bunch of so filter group are just designated by an integer. And, and you can see here that there is a eight uh, filter groups that's now actually not all used, but mo most of them are used. There's seven-ish that are used. So filter group zero, this is where everything happened. Um, but if you open something with a um, a set filter view or a source table view or data item view, stuff like that, you will get those filters put into filter group two. Uh, if you use the run page view or sub page view, you will get it into filter group three. And if you do it like with the with the link instead, you'll get it into filter group four. Um, filter group six is used for security. So we have a product from eFocus called the Advanced Cloud Security that applies uh, security on on everywhere in the system, and and all that security is applied to filter group six. Um, filter group seven is used for clearing the state of fact boxes, which I. I have no idea what it means. If you do, let me know in the comments below. Uh, if someone from Microsoft can actually explain that, that would be cool. Uh, and maybe somebody noticed that I skipped uh, a, 
over the, the filter group minus one, which is the cross column uh, filtering. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. But if you want to put two filters on the same field, you simply apply a filter group. So in this case, we, we, can, we can put this in filter group. Uh, so we can do filter group 10 and then put this thing in filter group 11. And then to, just to be an, a nice filter group citizen, uh, we will put the system back to whatever filter group was currently available. That's just an old pattern. Maybe it's not that important anymore. Uh, it used to be if you modified base objects and did filter group stuff. So in this case, this will result in the combined filter of 100 to 300 because the 100 is more restrictive than the 80 and the 300 is more restrictive than the 400. Um, we can run it and see if uh, that makes sense with the data I have. Let's see, come on, you can do this. So two filters. And now we can see that this, this, all the 80s are gone and nothing uh, above 300. Uh, so we have two filters applied. And if we go into the filter pane, we cannot see these filters. They are totally hidden because filter group 10 and 11 are just filter group 10 and 11. There's no UI that can ever get to them. So you have the option of really making secret filters if you really want. So there's no show uh, system filters or anything. Those filters are completely hidden. Um, so the last thing uh, that we, we had there was the that thing with cross uh, cross column filters, and and what is a cross column filter? Well, it, in reality, that's what has been set up here. So, I can, what do I do if I get a zero here? I don't really get anything useful. Uh, I can do chair, but I think that's already chair. Um, we probably need some some place with a bit more text. Let's let's find some customers. Come on. Um, and we could just you know if we had something that let's search for for a T. Well, we had a T. We have a T in in multiple of these lines. Um, and the way it works in code, I'm just going to show you, uh, it, it's very simple, is that if you do break dot uh, filter group minus one, and then you do rec dot set filter on, in this case, description with, let's do one of these with Asterix uh, chair and and then we do reg set filter description two whoops with the same filter and back to zero. We present it. So this one will set the multi-column, cross-column fields, meaning that they will it will be an OR statement between fields. Um, so uh, either description one has chair in it or description two has chair in it. Uh, so so that's the very secret filter group zero, um, and. Um, it's not something I recommend using in code because it it's not that uh, it's a performance hawk and uh, it's 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 very cool for users to use in the in the UI, uh, but.
but you should you should not use it in code um, unless you really have to. But hey. Anyway, that's filters in in Business Central. Uh, it's actually quite powerful, and um, you can do a lot of stuff with them. Uh, you can also do some terrible for performance. Uh, uh, things if, if you apply filters on uh, maybe I should actually you know what I, I was going to do an outro but but let me go back and and just do one more thing is that filters best friend is the is the set current key um, function so if let's say we have this item two and I go in and find item two's description here. And I go down and, and, and look not at all the events. Okay, let's search for keys. So if I want to set a fields on the item table on the vendor number field, I should do set current key number or vendor number. So if I know that I'm setting filters on, on some, some tables with a lot of records, I should make sure that if there is a key that makes sense, use the key. Uh, and 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 maybe in some cases you might need to set more filters than you would think you would need in order just to be friendly to the key. Um, because you might have something that is, you want to filter something that's, uh, how to explain this, that you have fields, field values that are connected. So you need to set a filter on one thing, but it's the other thing that's in the key. So in that case, make sure that you also apply the filter that's in the key because that's gonna help the system find the, the, the records faster. Anyway, so remember it, 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 to make sure that your filters are actually performing great that there are keys on it uh, and you you select the key with set current key but set current key is also dangerous because you can set any field so you can kind of applying a sorting but if there's no actual key on that sorting you're just making the system performing even worse because then it needs to sort it also uh, so be careful with that anyway here is the second ending to this video because one was not enough so that was filters remember to subscribe let me know in the comments below if uh, you need more videos on filters i don't think so but if there's anything else that you would like to see a video on let me know here or on twitter or, or in all the places that you can find me until next time have a wonderful day